Hello Alyssa, I'm in. Good morning. This is my Moran Family Crest coffee mug. Thanks dad. For those of you who are asking, thank you very much. Um, I've been using a little ice pack on this swelling here. It's gone down, so it's much better today. See, so yeah, I can almost close it. So much better today than it was yesterday. Improving. As I said, it takes a couple of days for it to go away and then it's fine. I am going to talk in another video about my health stuff and the inflammation and all that, but this is not the video for that. This video is talking about my method for learning Norwegian. So the approach I'm taking is called MIA or the Mass Immersion Approach. And as the name indicates, there's a lot of immersion. In fact, that's the primary method by which you acquire the language. And there's a focus in the, in the system about learning versus acquiring. When we develop our first language skills, English in my case, we acquire the language. We don't learn it. We don't study grammar when we're babies. We acquire the language through natural input. The primary emphasis is on this natural acquisition of a language through mass, massive immersion, hence the name. I'm gonna try and consolidate a lot of the information because there is a website where you can get all the information you need called Mass Immersion Approach. And it's in development, but there's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, the challenge is that it's very verbose and there's a lot of dense content and information. So if you don't have patience to read through a lot of stuff, that might not be your cup of tea. Um, so I'm gonna try and consolidate it, but keep in mind, I probably will misrepresent some things and get a lot of things wrong. That's okay, that's just uh, because I have a limited understanding. I've only been at it for about six, six weeks now. So check out the website. Matt has a great YouTube channel called Matt versus Japan, which I will link to up here. No, up here. I would definitely recommend checking that out. Maybe I'll, I'll put a couple links to videos that are really helpful down below. Uh, he has a lot of information on there. He posts videos all the time. He also has a Patreon uh, of which I'm a member and you get access to exclusive Q and A's that he's been doing for the past year or two. Uh, which is really a, a mine of great information about this approach and his approach. It's interesting, he, he still kind of is growing and learning and adapting his approach over the last five years or so he's been doing Japanese as well. So it's not like he, well, 10 years altogether, five years more intensively. Uh, so it's not like uh, he's a, it's a set system that's done. They're still developing it and refining it. And even now his whole, approach to the different phases is changing. He just mentioned this recently that he's sort of adjusting things a little bit to make it more accessible to more people because initially his approach was based off of a system called all Japanese all the time, which was very intense, basically uh, a very uh, lack of forgiving for not being completely immersed in Japanese. Uh, it's a long story, but um, he's adjusted things because he realizes that not everyone has the ability or the time to commit 24 seven of their resources to learning a language. So, so there's three main things I'll mention here that is part of this approach. And there's a lot of other things, but these are the three main things. Focus number one is on active listening. And active listening is the act of immersing yourself and paying attention. The key is focusing on the content that you're watching. Initially, when you learn a new language, this is challenging because a brand new language, you don't understand much of what's going on. So uh, you're watching TV shows or dramas or movies and you don't understand a lot of it. So initially you can use English subtitles to get the gist of the story, but after that, rewatch it again. Actually, you should rewatch a few times so that you can listen to it without that uh, crutch because there's a difference between reading and listening. There's different activities there. So a lot of active listening initially through video, later you can do it through audio, but the key is that it's focused, that you're paying attention. You don't do active listening while you're doing the dishes. That's actually called passive listening. That's a whole different thing. You don't do active listening while you're sleeping or driving the car or doing other stuff. That's different types of listening. There's active, passive, and background. Active is the key. And you wanna put as much time into active as you can. Also, part of this active listening is comprehensible input. And that's getting input that you can understand at least the gist or the context or understand most of what's happening. So that's the first focus is active listening, listening in general, getting as much input as you can. It's called the mass immersion approach. So there's a massive amount of immersion, which is watching TV or watching shows or movies 
or listening to podcasts or the radio or audiobooks, reading, all of this stuff is mass immersion. And there's a focus on listening because the, the main key to this system is that you're trying to get your brain to identify the phonetic structure of, of the language as quickly as you can. Just the same way you learn language as a baby. You didn't learn it by studying grammar or vocabulary lists. You learned it through your brain identifying repetitive sound structures in the language. And that's how you learn the language when you're a child. So the same approach here. The, the reason there, there's a lot of focus on watching uh, TV shows or dramas or if you're learning Japanese anime uh, is because it's more enjoyable. It's hard to sit there and listen to something boring or incomprehensible, incomprehensible, incomprehensible for a long period of time. So by getting engaged in a story or a TV show and understanding the context of what's happening, it makes it more enjoyable as a process. So that's the reason for that. But as your understanding improves, you move on to material that's a little more dense. Uh, you move on to like podcasts or interviews or audiobooks or things that um, things that initially would be very challenging for a beginner language learner, but if you're at the intermediate level, it's, it's a good challenge for you. So there's different levels to this. The second focus, uh, at least for me, is on SRS, which stands for Spaced Repetition System, which is a system of <clears throat> being reminded of something at the intervals that you need it to be reminded of. If you're familiar with the Pimser language system, uh, Paul Pimser was one of the pioneers of using this uh, SRS system within language learning. Uh, he was at the University of Ohio, I think, in Columbus, a long time ago. So his Pimsleur language series is based off of that approach. Initially, a lot of people might ask, well, how can you watch something if you don't understand any of the words in the language? And that's where SRS comes in. Initially, part of the first phase of this is to build a base vocabulary of words. The, there's a lot of frequency word lists out there for languages, the top 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 most used words in the language. And by building just that first thousand, it's been shown scientifically that that first thousand words uh, gets you like 70 to 90% of the comprehension of the basic structure of the language, uh, at least the vocabulary. So by building that vocabulary list in your brain through SRS, uh, through a flashcard system like Anki, which a lot of people use, you can build that vocabulary while getting input and then use that vocabulary as part of your input. There's also this thing called sentence mining, which is where you take sentences that you understand most of, but there's one word that you don't quite understand and you take the sentence into your flashcard system. So you're not doing it based on vocabulary alone when you're drawing from your active listening practice, you're taking it from the context of a whole sentence or a phrase. A lot of people actually prefer learning phrase-based approaches. Phrase-based approaches uh, because they like learning things in context of how things are said in the entirety. If you learn the word um, get, there's a lot of ways that the word get can be translated. I get it, um, get away from me, there's a lot of things. But if you learn it in a phrasal context like uh, get the heck out of here and you learn the phrase get the heck out of here and what that phrase means then when you hear that phrase um, it's easier to pick up the language in the context of how the language is actually used that vocabulary is not an island by itself it's part of a chain of islands that form comprehension of that language if that makes sense again my understanding is limited but this is how i understand it to be so using srs you build the vocabulary uh, and you sent, mine those sentences from your input that you're getting massive amounts of. So the third focus is just to do a lot of that stuff. So you're doing a lot and a lot of input. You're doing number one, active listening, and number two, SRS, and you're doing them every day, all the time, whenever you can. Uh, there's other types of listening, active, passive, background, as I mentioned. Uh, passive is if you're listening while you're doing something else. So you're washing the dishes and you're listening to some audio that you've recorded or a TV show or something, or you're driving and you're listening to a podcast. That's passive listening because you're not actively focused on it. The idea here, at least to me, is focus. You have to be focused and really paying attention and listening for the sounds. That's active listening. Everything else is passive or it's background where you're like you're sleeping and you're listening to the language being spoken. That's background listening. And I'll talk about that some other time. I tried that. It's very interesting, actually. 
So again, my understanding is limited. I'm not an expert in this. This is just my approach. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of input with Norwegian. I've been watching a lot of TV shows um, and watching them repeatedly with the subtitles initially first, or I'll watch a, I'll read a summary of that show and then I'll go into the show and just try and focus and listen. Um, and then if I pick up sentences that I understand most of, I'll put those into my flashcard system. One other thing to note here is that in the beginning, output is not encouraged. It's all input based. Output comes later. Once you've built up a basic level, then you start outputting, you start speaking, you start writing, you start doing those things. But initially output is not encouraged in this system. And there's a lot of reasons for this. And you can look at the website for why that is the case. I'm taking a slightly different approach in this context because I do like trying to speak the language. When I'm learning, I'm repeating stuff just in my mouth all the time. Uh, I can't help it. It's just the way I, I do things. So while output is not a focus of mine, I'm not avoiding output. If, if I come to a phrase that I want to just practice saying, I'll, I'll practice saying it. On the videos here, I'll say, Hallo alle sammen, I hit the remark, or I'll say, Hold uh, bra or uh, you know, I'll say phrases just to practice the, the phonetics of it because I, I, I enjoy saying stuff. The MIA approach, this is the base of how I'm learning Norwegian. This is how I'm approaching Norwegian right now. I'm also doing a couple things that aren't a part of it. And one of those things is using Pimsleur. Now I'm not doing Pimsleur the way that people who do Pimsleur usually do Pimsleur. That's a lot of Pimsleur. Uh, I'm using it just as a supplemental tool. And the reason I like Pimsleur isn't because it helps me learn a language or to speak quickly. It's because it helps your brain identify the phonetic elements of the language really well. It helps parse those sounds out for you because of the way that it introduces those to you. Now it's a speaking focused program and you can approach it that way, but I approach it more as a listening practice. And I also do the speaking just because it helps my mouth struggle and get around those phonetics. When I was learning other languages, it helped my Chinese pronunciation a lot to go through Pimsleur first. Um, other languages too. Whenever I use the Pimsleur version, my pronunciation improves quite a bit. So I find Pimsleur really helpful for developing a good accent and a good pronunciation in a language um, and getting also a good feel for the phonetic structure of that language. And that's what I use it for. I'm not using it to build my vocabulary, although it does that naturally because it has an SRS component to it. So I find it's a good supplement to this. I don't do it every single day. Uh, I'll do it maybe once every other day on average. So a 30 day program takes me like two months to get through, but that's okay because it's not my focus. My focus is on active immersion, active listening. I think that gives you the general idea of my approach with Norwegian. I'm doing a lot of immersion, getting as much of the sound into my ears as I can. Granted, I don't do as much as I could, but I'm new to this. So I'm trying to adjust and ramp up slowly over time. I probably average at least a couple hours a day of listening, active listening, maybe an hour or two, but um, passive listening, I do a lot more. I'll listen to things while I'm walking around, doing chores or whatever, I'm working. One thing I'm going to mention that I did that was really helpful initially was I went on Fiverr and I hired someone to translate, so a native Norwegian speaker to translate the self-introduction that I have of myself into Norwegian. And then I hired a voice. Uh, Norwegian voice person, uh, recorder, to speak that uh, both at a normal conversational speed and at a slower speed to parse out the sounds um, for me. And then I listen to that over and over and over because that's the vocabulary, the terminology, all the things that I would use in an in initial conversation with someone. So listening to that is really helpful for me to get the phrases that I need to introduce myself or to talk about myself initially with someone in Norwegian. So I found that to be really good input, a uh, good input source for myself. Uh, it's not for everyone, but I enjoy doing that. It cost me like 15 bucks to do all that, uh, get it professionally recorded and translated. But I don't want to make this video too long. You get the idea. If you want more information, you know where to go. MassImmersionApproach.com. Check out Matt vs. Japan YouTube video linked somewhere. Uh, if you have any questions about my approach, please let me know. It's funny, every time I mention that I'm going to learn Norwegian or that I'm learning Norwegian, somebody from Norway in inevitably mentions, oh, you should check out nrk.no, 
um, and make sure you have a VPN, you can get all their stuff. So that's a great resource. And I think at some point I'm going to mention all my language learning resources for Norwegian or how I get access to Norwegian language content, especially TV shows, podcasts, radio, because there's a lot of good content out there and it's pretty easily accessible. So I'd love to share that with you guys. So that's it for this day's video. If you have any questions about my language approach or anything I've said today, please put them in the comments below. I'll get back to you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care of yourselves. Be happy, be good. Uh, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Hold bra. Bye.